company by the predations of the private central bank, and in 1832, Andrew Jackson successfully campaigned for his second term as president under the slogan. Uh, the thing I've been, uh, well, it's on the YouTube, uh, all, all wars are bankers' wars. I'll put a link so you can, it's very, how long is it? It's like 43 minutes, it's the, most, it's the best 43 minutes you're going to spend as far as understanding what's really going on in the world. I'm just letting you know that right now, a little tip like that. Shall we start? Okay. This is going to be a little long one, as you may or may not know, um, this channel, what I'm doing now is, this channel started as me just uh, talking to this, talking to people, talking to this uh, guy, it doesn't matter, but the point is, uh, it's really almost like a, uh, adventures that I've had, right, in the world, because I've had a long life, uh, and, um, and, but when ADOS came about, I decided to take those adventures and try to relate them to basically, uh, you know, a, more American descendants of chattel slavery. That, that would be we we wanted, but but sort of show. I've been. You'll see. Let me, this this one is just going to be dedicated to one one simple thing, and it's going to sort of um, parallels to what's going on with the ADUS movement. What am I looking for? Oh yeah, I have. Hey, I got a new sign. I made a new sign. See? Can you read it? Can you read it? it says. Uh, the ADOS reality, and then there's a little asterisk there, right? A movement of repair, a movement of repair, rations, a movement of repair rations, right? And then of course I, I defined uh, ADOS under there like that. A movement of repair, repair to repair rations, right? You say, hey. No source words. There's no such alliteration. Look at that. You got, you got stuff in there. You got slashes in there and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Well, I can do that. You say, what do you mean you can do that? Well, first of all, my undergraduate degree is in the English literature. And I got a degree, as Barbara and Tia would say, just so, so I can mess up the English language. But that's not good. Okay. Well, but the other thing is that, as you may and may not know, I'm a denizen of Neely Fuller Jr wrote this book. The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. Anyway, it's a, it's, we call it, I call it the code, right? And it's a book for victims of, uh, of racist white supremacy. At any rate, in this book, one of the things he says is that, hey, words are just words. You can make up, make up words all the time. <laughs> so I make up words all the time. Of course I can. Of course Neely Fuller said I can. I got the permission of Neely Fuller Jr. Okay. Uh, this thing is going to be about um, a section of my life. That, um, you, many, you may, many of you may or may not know the the, uh, the juggernaut of uh, of uh, um, whatever um, democracy now, right? Um, now I have an association. Well, I had I have an association with democracy. I had an association with democracy. Now I'm gonna tell you a little story how democracy now became democracy. Now that you know it right now, when you get on you, when you get to, you know, watch it on the, your TVs or whatever you're watching on your, your devices or whatever have you, looks really good, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take you from back. Right? I'm not gonna say you, you know how it started, whatever have you. Oh, by the way, one of the reasons why I'm doing this. Is because if you look at Amy's first book, hi darling. Hey, baby, it's your son. Thank you, darling. But uh, what, what, which one is this? That's the black tea and moringa. Black tea and moringa. Black, <laughs> black, black tea and moringa. <sighs> it's kind of hot. I better leave it alone right now. It's hot. Yeah. Yeah, I better leave it. Um, uh, when, in her first book, she's my. They, they mentioned me in the first book, right? and what they mentioned is that. I would climb the because I would climb the, the the fire pole because we were, we were in the fire garret at the time, uh, at this that particular time, and I would climb climb up from the floor down up to because it's in the garret. So I'd climb up the fire pole, right, and because I'd climb up the fire pole to get to the studio, right. Everybody else would take the elevator. That's the only elevator. The only way. Yeah, there was a stair. There was a spiral stair too. But I would climb up the fire pole. So that's what I'm. That's what the, that's what the, that's, that's the baby's book. That's what I'm. That's what I'm noted for. Only goes so. He who writes the book, <laughs> so I'm writing a book right now. The set, the record, whatever. Now I got to take you back. Um, before um, my last job at uh, WBAI um, was to be what's called an arts director of the radio station. I'll put this on just in case you all can't see my lovely face. Put my 
my light on here, was um, Oscar. Now, Oscar Rector uh, at WBAI is a community radio station, part of the Pacific Network of Radio Stations. This is the New York station, which basically makes it the biggest, you know, radio community radio station in, in you know, in America. Um, so, uh, arts director means that I was a director of, a, I was the music director. I was also also in that department with the, the drama literature, which is my forte because I'm, I'm an audio dramatist, and also uh, the critics. Right? So let's just deal with music director. Now, now you say, oh, music director, that's nice. But here's the, here's the thing: when you're a music director of a station like WBA or community, well, a station like WBA, let me leave the rest of the community radio stations out of this. Now, if you say, if you say like you're a music director of, uh, I don't know, what, just name the station, hot, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now that might, you know, they might play just hip hop, or they might just play R and B. They might just uh, play, or you say a classical stage. They might say classical. Music. So if you're the music director of that station, or if you're the program, you know, say music director of the station, that means you have to deal with just that. Now, to be music director of some place like WBAI, what happens is. I have all kinds of, of DJs on on staff, right? You have you have you have salsa, you know. You have of course you have jazz, you have classical, you have opera, you have R and B, you have bluegrass, you have I mean, there's a you have old time, you know, um, what's that? Show tunes, you know. You have uh, soundtracks. You have, I mean, this like a lot, you know. Um, Eventually, I'm the one that put uh, Jay Smooth on the air, which made that we had we had a hip hop presence on on, on the air. We finally, had you know hip hop on on on, a, on the radio station. Anyway, that means my, my 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 musical knowledge is like really is is different. Okay, it's just different. This came into play much later on when I came. Uh, don't worry about that part. Okay, I had tell you all that just to let you know. Now, here's what happened. We there was a a, a coup perpetrated at WBI. Um, uh, these folks. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to avoid names. I'm just going to put things down. You know, I don't want to give anybody any glory or, any, or take any. You know, except, well, I mentioned Amy Ray only because it's democracy. Now everybody knows Amy. Now I mentioned Juan also. Um, so, so what? So what happens? There was a, a slight coup at the station, and what they did at first, they, they basically stuff happened, right? And they, they, the. Um, a person came in as a as uh, what do you call it station manager, and that person started to um, per perpetrate some stuff, right? And out of that stuff, a lot of pe uh, some people got protest. Some people got their rope programs got kicked off the air, right? At the time, I was doing a program called No More Radio in, the, in what was like Sunday night and Monday morning. Okay, that's No More Radio is my is my program that I've been for years. No More Radio. See, No More Radio. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, so um, this was in, I don't forget the year, but you know, 2000, whatever it happened. The, um, and then I stopped, oh yeah, I left the station, I stopped No More Radio, uh, but I would do specials every once in a while. And I think somebody even took over from me for a little bit, not enough, but I did specials for a while. And I was traveling, I was doing some other stuff, right? And at the same time, I was working for The Sopranos. Um, and then. Uh, and then uh, I was writing, I was writing plays. I was doing a lot, of, a lot of audio drama and stuff like that, but around other places. Now, when this coup happened, I get in the middle. But I was at, I was still at this. I was at the station somehow. I had stopped traveling for a little bit. Was back in New York, and um, and back doing this program and stuff like that. Um, now I'm also a production engineer. You know, the board operator like that. So I know this board operator. Now, when this coup happened, the uh, Errol Maitland, who was the, who was the engineer for Democracy Now!, he left with the crew that, that, that left the station, and, and Matthew Finch had to, had to take over. You know, Matthew Finch, I tra actually I trained Matthew in radio and, and engineering, but he's part of the arts department. All my arts department people, they had to, they had to know how to edit tape, they, know, had, they had to run their own board and stuff like that. Public affairs, a little different. News, a little different. Okay. So, what, what happened when this thing happened? Matthew was in a, it was a strange position because Matthew was because he had took over. He was arch director of the radio station at that particular point, and uh, so it was sort of like a conflict for him to work to to be arch director, just like management, and also do this whole thing with it was a conflict. So I came to you know everybody knows me. So I became the the, the engineer at the station for that. Now. I think when Bernard was out, but I did, whatever it is. When I was doing um, at the station, at, when we was at 120 Wall Street, uh, at that at that station, 
I uh, I had access to uh, to uh, to Matthew's record collection, to Bernard's record collection, which was huge, uh, to Brother Shine's re re uh, record collection, and then my own stuff. Lock up. So I had like four sources, so I could be very eclectic. And the way the structure was, we had we had the main control room, right, and then there was like a, um, a studio studio A, studio B. Uh, Studio, uh, and, well, whatever the engineer was A, B, and whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, so when Democracy Now was coming on, was coming on, they, they were preparing, right? I would, they would be in one studio, I would be in another. Would they would just give me a hint? This, this is going to be our segments, and then I would, I would pull records that were related to that sex segment, and and you know, I would just when when it came on, I would engineer. When the segment came on, like there was a, a after the headlines, like six minutes, then there would be a musical break, and then we'd go to like a twenty-minute interview. There'd be a musical break, another. And, the, and another 20 minutes of thing, um, uh, then a musical break and just sort of wrap up and I would like that. So it's basically three musical breaks if you want to say that, maybe an encore, whatever it is. Okay. So, so it was quite easy for me at the station. It was nice, you know, I'm uh, having a good time. But then there was this conflict and, and the, the management that had come in, they said, uh, at that, even at that time, um, Democracy Now! was a really good, was a, was a, it's community radio station, and it's the real community radio station. Listen to the sponsor, which means that you you, you would uh, uh, ask for money, you know, at, at periodic times of the year. And so, Democracy Now was one of those really. They made a lot of uh, money for the station. Okay, so the, so uh, the management didn't want to get rid of uh, didn't want to get rid of Democracy Now, but you know, uh, you know, they, Amy was always you know it was. Amy and Yatrice would have, I had mentioned the name already, uh, was having a fight in the hallway, all, all kinds of weird stuff happened. And so finally, um, the, that management, they kicked Democracy out the station. And they said that they, they said basically that they weren't kicking them off the air, but they were out the station. That was kind of, kind of some weird, weird thing. But uh, Errol, the greatest, Errol Maitland, uh, who, uh, Errol Maitland, and, and got um, uh, basically uh, uh, set up in the firehouse, the, Known as the Firehouse, that's where John Albert and Keiko, they, they, their community, um, uh, community, you know, video thing, on, on Lafayette Street, and they're like one block, two blocks below, uh, below uh, Canal Street, um, and so they set the, the the station up in the garret of the of the firehouse, because that wasn't being used. Just like some cameras there, some stuff there. It was just a little space, and so. But now, when we went there, the problem was. I didn't have that luxury of doing all the rest of that stuff now. I just had, you know, there was a C, two, two CD players, you know. I think that's really about it and some other stuff, you know, so I had to engineer and stuff like that. Okay, so when we started, um, so we just, so so one day I got a call and said, hey, we're no longer there, we're down at this other place. So they were still carrying the the, the Democracy Now! feed to, to the station because people really protesting is a big, big, big to do. And this whole thing with the national, the, the, the Democracy Now! would air on uh, KPFA, which is in uh, Berkeley, but it wouldn't air on, and it did wear on KPFK, I think, which is in um, Los Angeles, but it didn't wear, um, not the Houston station didn't carry it, and I think the DC station did, did carry it, certified, but some affiliates carried it. They had, to, there's a lot of stuff going on, but the, the uh, KPFA had this, Sort of, sort of back channel. So our our affiliates still got democracy now. But now when they kicked us out of the fires, and we no longer had the signal for WBAI, what happened is basically New York wasn't getting it. New York wasn't hearing democracy now. Okay, now. Oh yeah, rang up black day. So what happened is. Um, now, what radio station? There's a radio station in New Jersey. Oh, man, I forgot today. I'm really, really, very sorry. Anyway, they carry. They said, "Look, we'll carry the signal, right?" So that means we could we we, be, we could be picked up in Lower Manhattan, but not Upper Manhattan. Okay. So that went on for a while, and then uh, what happened? Uh, 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 oh. A guy, uh, or the, the, it ended up where we were in the, in the in the garret was actually the the um, what is it called auxiliary you know, uh, ancillary auxiliary studio for MNN, the Manhattan Neighborhood Network community, uh, um, uh, you know, cable station, right? The the, the, the what do you call public, you know, the public broad, whatever, you know, what I mean, the, the, it's, it's community radio, station, community TV station, community 
whatever. When the cables, they had to always had some sort of a uh, few stations that they had to have that did community thing, even though the cable would do some other stuff. Okay. So a guy came up there one time, and um, no, uh, he says, he looked around, he said, well, you know, because we had this problem with, with broadcasting, not, re not reaching Manhattan, or whatever have you, he said, well, why don't you just open up the cameras? So I looked at Amy, Amy looked at me. <laughs> he said, no, see, because the camera is right there, but it's down, you know, it's like, it's like a storage. Is there. No, this is our studio. If you open up the camera, you know, you, if you, if you, uh, you know, uh, if you if you if you open up the camera and you um, and you record that, then I'll, we'll put it on MNN, right? And also it could go on uh, this uh, other uh, uh, like the Brooklyn. It's a cable, different cable thing. So Manhattan had, had a certain cable access, public access. That's what it's public access. And Brooklyn had public access. Queens had public access. But anyway, we can get it on that. I said, oh, okay. We said fine. So hey, we right away open up the camera. This is where the signs come in. Now, if you look, if you ever look in the archives of, of uh, of old uh, democracy now, program, you notice the, the walls are covered with newspaper, with, you know, newspaper like clips and stuff like that. And, the, and I think the uh, the Apple, whatever that thing first first came out with the Apple signer. If you look at those things, we had it, Amy done put on stickers like um, uh, Miranda Kennedy was in there. But anyway, and Brad and, and um, anyway, so they would put these stickers on there like uh, Free Mamuya Abul Jamal, you know, uh, uh, whatever the stickers. Uh, you know, wildlife, whatever the deal, deal was. So it was pretty, pretty funny. It was pretty raw. It was very, very raw. In fact, it was so raw, and we didn't have any. And the director came in. We had a, a TV director, and he was, he was an Israeli guy at time. Uh, anyway, he, what he did was, if you see those early things, you see a lot of my hands or, or the, of the. The VU, the meters going. Sometimes you see my hand. Sometimes when you go into break, you know, you'd see me. You know, you, you would know I had locks, very long locks. Okay, so, so that's what happened. Now, the next thing that happened is uh, Free Speech TV. They said, "Look, we'll take the tape and play it. You will play it a day later, but with all the out thing. Free Speech TV was all over was a bunch of places that uh, that Pacifica Radio wasn't." Little short, short thing. Our, when they realized the, the the audience that we had most was from like Mississippi and stuff like that, very interesting. Like, phew, and we never had reached a Mississippi's area, whatever have you. So, um, t t so 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 then we had that. Then things started to change. You know, the set started. You know, we took the paper. The newspaper came off. You could see the the. the behind the glass, the the, the, director, the, the TV crew was behind, the, t the TV director, like, you know, the, uh, you know, the switcher and all that stuff was, was all there. And then you had the, we had three, uh, um, shout out to Simba and what's name, but we had like three three camera people, you know, um, this this, uh, this this brother, uh, brother this, this sister, you know, they all had locks, I had locks. The three black people in the whole crew, we all had locks. <laughs> okay, anyway. And then gradually things started to change. You know, uh, William Kunstler's daughter came up and did some some producing. It's a bunch of it was really uh, Ratner's wife came up and did some other stuff. So this thing started to really really grow. And then it was it was you know being broadcast. Then what happened was some Hollywood guy um, looked at was looking at the. The, I guess seeing it, whatever. So he came to redesign the studio. By that time, now I have to start here. Now, my job again was to um, was these musical breaks and to engineer and stuff like that. When we moved from the station, I had no access except for a little bit of record collection. But at the same time, man, this is a morning program. At the same time, uh, Jake, my man, uh, the guy that always uh, that did all my audio dramas as as, as as the engineer for my audio drama, he was working. His, this is a great guy. This this cat, he designed Sony Studios and stuff like that. But he was working s Sirius Satellite Radio, just Sirius Satellite yeah, Radio, just started. And then he was hired as an engineer with them. He's like a big, big shot there. Um, so he, so basically, they they hired me to be at Sirius Satellite Radio. And uh, this was just starting. Remember, I'm the one. I was. I would, I would do the overnight. Yeah, it was overnight. So I go from there. Yeah, I would go from there to Democracy Now in, 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 in the morning. But what I would do, I had the cable, I had the cable, all the, it's just a huge job. It's just running these cables, making sure it's right, da 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 But also, I had to monitor the satellites. Now, Sirius Satellite Radio, this is before it became XM or whatever. XM was, was terrestrial, Sirius Satellite was up there. The satellites had three satellites orbiting, you know, the Earth. 
were orbiting the station. And these satellites so far, they were above the military satellites. That's how far up they were. If something happened to the satellites, they would just have just lost. And we just had to monitor them and stuff like it was like nervous. Ooh, I could mess up this whole thing. You know. So let me just say this. I wasn't real. I'm like, anyway, don't worry about it. Uh, but at the same time, they had all these studios and the, the, the different programs, you know, the, the, this new, this is before Howard Stern and all this stuff. But, and they used to, they have this way, they have music stuff, they have music, a lot of music stuff. So I would burn CDs, I would burn CDs with all kinds of music. Da, 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 da. So I basically had a music library that I would bring to democracy now. Okay. So. That's what happened. That's how, but what I'm trying to say is, so this program that started as a radio program in a, in a station was pushed someplace else. Because it was pushed someplace else, it became gag. How does this relate to the ADS movement? I'm saying that you start someplace. This thing is grown by leaps and bounds, and as it grows, people will look, and your help will come. What happens is the core people, when I say core people, I'm not just talking about you, you know, Miss Yvette uh, and, 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 and Attorney Moore. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Yvette Cornell and, and, and Antonio Moore. That's the thing. But what will happen, other people, then you know the listeners that call in, you know, you start seeing them. Then other people will start to help. Gradually, you know, it's like water seeks its level. So the real the people who understand what ADOS is about, they will, they will start supporting it. They will start saying, wow, this is it. This is our opportunity. This is what we've been waiting This is what I've been waiting for all my life. Okay, literally, I'm saying I've been a part of a lot of things when you start national writers, a, a lot of things that just start up, you know what I mean? But this is the first time in my long life, I don't say long life, but you know, that I've, seen, I've seen a lot of things from the inception is what I'm trying to say. And, and I'm telling you, this movement is not only authentic, it will work, it, it, it will happen. It's like ordained. It's, it's like the universe. Every, and it's, interestingly enough, a lot of things are popping up all over the all over the world. Boom, 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 boom. Against this, these, these see the the bane of our existence. People don't understand it. You do the politics. We're doing politics, but it's the banking system. It's the bankers, and they've been doing this for like since the start of the republic. I'm talking about the United States, really. And just I'll put that link. And you just listen to this 43 minutes or whatever. It's, you will understand what's going on now, even by we're about to head into another war. It's all laid out for you. So the importance of ADOS is we have a bunch of other moves. We have to do what we have to do. And don't be distracted by them trying to start a war. Don't be distracted by that. Stay on the lane. To hold all these politicians, especially the politicians, feet to the fire. Feet to the fire. I was watching the other thing. It was interesting because Tulsi Gabbard was, uh, was on CNN, uh, uh, what do you call it? Town hall or whatever it is, they didn't ask her about reparations. Out of all people in the whole field right now that de deals with reparations, Tulsi Gabbard's got a plan. Mm -hmm. And she did sign on to HR. I think she's part of she's the new building. She's part of, she's uh, one of the co signers for um, uh, HR 40. Which, if, you're, if your congressperson is not signed on HR 40, that's the first thing you need to do right now. Make sure, talk to your congressperson, sign HR 40. That's the first. You, Get a group of you together. Get to your congressperson, whoever it is, whoever it is. Make them sign an HR. Make them co-sponsor HR 40, whatever they have to do. And um, I mean, it's the thing with these senators, like you know Kamala Harris and whatever he's, uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren. Who's the other senator? You know, the, the Cory Booker, right? All four of them, all four of them need to right now write their 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 version of, revolu of a resolution that would deal with not the study because the study is already in Congress, right? How, how, a resolution on on, 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 on on reparations, let's put it that way, or re, repair-ations. Um, uh, they need to do that right now. And and I would say that we, we get the conference, the, AD, the inaugural ADOS conference is happening in October. If any of them want to come to the conference, whatever happened, they need to come and present their papers to that conference. Remember, it's October. To that conference. Okay, the first uh, primaries, I guess, they, you know, they, they, the caucuses and what, I don't know when it is, December, whenever it is. So it's enough time, right? Because what's really going to happen is because, you know, in, in, in Iowa, you might be able to get away with it, I don't know. New Hampshire might be getting away, I don't know. But then the, the next set of, when the primaries get to South Carolina, that's going to be the reckoning. I even, I've even advocated that they sh every, all these campaigns, you should have a black person on their, on, 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 in their, in their Midst, in their midst. And that black person, when I say black person, I'm talking about ADOS, they should actually be able to, to, they should have some contact with ADOS and they should be able to move their candidate towards our, 
to that point of view, to, uh, to, uh, to give them their marching orders. And if, they, if, by, if by South Carolina, they, that candidate hasn't moved in that direction, that a, that, that person, I'm talking, uh, yes, I'm talking about Miss Nina, anybody, they need to lead that campaign then either go independent with some other camp or go to other camp. Whoever is doing it, they just lead that camp and say, "No, man, yo, or I just I mentioned Miss Nia." He says, "Bernie, it ain't a problem, but I cannot, in good conscience, because of all the stuff that that, that my lineage has been through, to hang with you than for you not to significantly to to be a. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I say? So all these people are in trouble." They are in trouble because ADOS is like a shredding machine coming after everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, don't care, nothing like that. They're going to come after you, all right? Not after you, but no, we're going to go through you because th this movement, we're going to get... It's right. We're going to get what we want. We're going to get what's due us, okay? What's due. That's all we're saying. That's just a little, you know... Putting the things together, say if democracy now was possible, I forget to say at some particular point we say that uh, Juan Juan Gonzalez, you know, out of principle, he just he said, look, I'm not care, I'm not going to be associated with the programs. He wasn't there, so when we did all the nine, and when 9/11 happened, you know, that wasn't filmed, but you know, we heard, I heard the plane overhead, and Juan wasn't there for that. But as soon as they got all settled and whatever have you, the strike was over, whatever that was happening, then Juan came back, which is a principal move. Juan was Juan's girl. I love Juan. Um, so anyway, let's put that little caveat in there. So that's it. Let me stop talking. Uh, this has been a, a, a dispatch from, from me, T, from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet. Reporting to you from ADES of the American descendant of chattel slavery. Letting you know what I only suspect. Travis Campbell.